Welcome to another wonderful extended episode of Into the Dojo, where we talk about martial arts and leave the politics at the door as usual. Uh, I'm your host, David Cobb, and today we have another fantastic guest just continuing in our series of talking about pragmatic martial arts and just the understanding of the realities of combat. Now, for those of you who might not know our guest, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of an intro and then we'll be able to let Bill say a few words. So uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Bill Wolf, he is a pressure tested martial arts instructor with over 40 years of combatives and tr combatives training, in addition to over 39 years of operational military and police service. He has extensive experience teaching infantry, close combat tactics and hand to hand combat since as far back as the 1970s. And of course, brothers and sisters in arms, I would like you to join me in welcoming all the way from Canada, if I am correct, um, the modern, the founder of Modern Defendo, Mr. Bill Wolf. Bill, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Yes, it's it's um it's it's honestly a, a pleasure to be able to just um just to be able to have this conversation with you as well as uh, the many guests that we've been able to have just going into this understanding of pragmatic martial arts and just with somebody of um your experience it's just a pleasure to be able to I guess pick your brain a little bit as to you know just understanding the <laughs> oh I don't like that 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 that, looks that could be scary it's a scary place and there's hey that's as you can tell by the mustache <laughs> and it's it's very the very awesome to me it just that's um that's something that i did notice when you came on screen i'm like wow that that mustache is pretty uh it's pretty strong there sir it's a throwback to the rsm day so mm, i see i see well um, again thank you very much for being able to come today to be able to share with us and um just to start off um as usual we like to have the guests just tell us a little bit about your background and just what or i guess in this case who introduced you to martial arts oh you want me to explain that Yes, oh. of course. <laughs> uh, well, I uh, so far I've been at it for over 61 years. So uh, doing martial arts, you know, in general. Uh, who started me? Oh, that's a good question. I guess it would be my grandfather, Captain Hill Wilson. He was a mm -hmm. sea captain. Um, he sailed the Orient back in the good old days, you know, 1900s through before World War II. Okay. Um, he had met a guy named Fairburn in shanghai uh so uh, when i was a young lad i you know it's hard to say like four or five years old you know mm -hmm. i had any as my mom said i came out of her marching so she figured i was going to be a soldier so i had long conversations with my grandfather about his you know time sailing the world if you will mm -hmm. uh you know he was torpedoed in world war one uh so he was all about adventure so when he's he got me skull locked on shanghai and he says, if you ever want to know how to fight, there's a guy named Fairburn. You have to learn from, mm. and, you know, being a kid didn't register me too many years later. But uh, yeah, so Gram Gramps did. My uh, dad was an Irish boxer, so and a, quite a good boxer. Oh. So, you know, that got me that side of things. And then many years later, when I was a eight year old kid, I met a guy named Harold Starn, who was uh, ex uh, British Royal Marine Commando. Uh, SOE, which is Special Operations Executive with Secret okay. Spies, James Bond of their day. Oh, okay. And Harold, Harold had served in Burma, uh, and Harold had been a judo practitioner, jiu-jitsu practitioner before the war. He actually trained uh, uh, in the Budokai in London under, mm. uh, oh, geez, I'm trying to think of his instructor's name, uh, Yaku, uh, I'd have to I'm skating right now, but he was one of the original. He, he bought ju judo and jujitsu to uh, London in 1906. It'll come to me. Mm. So, oh. yeah. so he, Harold had done all things uh, judo before the war. He was a second Dan. Mm. Um, so he was a tough, tough man by any oh, standards. Man. And so he introduced me as a kid to judo and jujitsu, uh, and the style called defend you, which is a Fairburn system of uh, fighting he created mm. for the military. Um, Harold had been an instructor under uh, who was taught by Fairburn at the commando school because Harold was one of the first commandos. Uh, he had been a Royal Marine Reservist, so, so when the commandos were formed, he was one of the first intakes. And the fact that he had a judo background, jujitsu background, he was selected as an instructor. So he did the first course, I believe, under mm -hmm. Fairburn. Then Fairburn was switched to uh, SOE and did other things and stuff like that. So Harold uh yeah harold would be the i guess the main mentor he got me involved in as i said martial arts military um 
cadets we have up here. We start when you're like 13 and you graduated into the reserve army, then the regular army, all things military and stuff like that. So guys like Harold, um, but he would be the mainstay of uh, martial arts. Uh, he, you know, I mean, he got me interested in kendo and karate and whatever came down the pike back in the day. We're talking 60s now. So there wasn't a whole lot, right. you know, there wasn't a whole lot of martial arts back in those days. Mm -hmm. I remember when I got my first black belt, nobody knew what it was. So, you know, that was <laughs> the 60s, they, what the hell's that? And then uh, I think a David Carradine's movie show came out. Was it Kung Fu or something was called? Yeah, yeah. But all of a sudden, <laughs> oh, I was a scary guy because I had a black belt. Well, didn't didn't mount a hell of beans up until David Carradine showed up. Then, of course, Bruce Lee and all that stuff. So, yeah. You know, carry on from there, you know. So, and that, but that's basically my introduction to martial arts back in the good old days and i was it's it's good that you were able to touch on um um on lieutenant colonel fairburn um i did some i managed to do a little bit of um of digging on just his his exploits as far as i guess what led him to um his martial arts journey and uh, manny actually um uh brought this up to me a while ago we was when he was talking about like just understanding uh defend a little bit more and he's like i think one of his things was he wanted to add in those types of aspects of the realism of combat into his art his art and i guess a, a question that that came up and actually um when i was preparing for this was just um understanding now your system that you teach is a modern interpretation of defend correct um some elements are um what i Defendo or modern Defendo, as we call it, uh, started in the Canadian Army. Mm -hmm. It's a Canadian Army close combat system. It was quantified or codified in 1947 uh, by a guy named Colonel Guy Guyatois, and uh, he commanded the first Canadian SAS squadron. Um, you readers may know what the SAS refers to. The Canadian version of the Canadian SAS squadron was basically a comprised group of World War II veterans mm -hmm. who'd served in First Special Service Force. Uh, commandos, SOE, uh, Guy Watoir himself had served, was uh, SOE, his wife was SOE as well, quite mm. an interesting couple, um, but he commanded SOE Paris, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, uh, he's the guy in our military who created all our airborne doctrine, uh, we still use today, he was the precursor to our special forces, uh, the SAS company became that, so he brought in Pat O'Neill, Major Pat O'Neill, who he had served, uh, who trained with in the uh, first special service force before Guy Artois went to SOE mm -hmm. he'd been part of the first special service force and he was taken out of uh the first special service force during training to go to Camp X which was a spy school here in Canada and because he was French Canadian he spoke French he'd gone to the Sorbonne in Paris so he understood Paris so he's a likely candidate mm -hmm. um Guy Artois had done um, uh, Sabat, French Sabat before the war in Montreal. Okay. So he, him and uh, O'Neill hit it off. But after the war, O'Neill, uh, who was a Fairburn protege, he served in the mm -hmm. Shanghai Municipal Police Force with uh, Fairburn, uh, became a detective sergeant. Um, they both trained in the same Judo Jiu Jitsu school on, with Fairburn and Yumasi Sensei, who had been the Emperor of Japan's instructor, who also caught uh, a, Somewhat famous judo kai name uh, Kimura. Uh, oh, Neil, okay. O'Neill had trained with Kimura. He was he was a senior dan to Kimura. Uh, O'Neill in World War II was the highest ranking dan wise. He was a, a six dan in judo, presented by the Kodo Khan itself. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, when he died, he was the seventh dan. So uh, he quite accomplished martial. So in forty seven. Um, Guillotoua brought him to Canada and they formalized what he taught in the uh, First Special Service Force mm -hmm. and all the stuff since then. And of course, Guy had the uh, best of the best in the Canadian Army. So all these guys were all armed combat guys. They'd all used armed combat. So they formalized a very close system. And the British system, as you mentioned, is Defend You, which is, okay. uh, which is British. Us being Canadians, uh, we can't call it Defend You because it's a bunch of pommies. So we <laughs> call it Defendo, which is, you know, is a Latin word which means to protect. So, ah, okay. so basically the similarities, there's some similarities. Uh, O'Neill was much more a younger martial artist than uh, Fairburn okay. by about 20 years. Oh, um, Fairburn's training in SOE commando, uh, especially in SOE was more about escape and evasion than mm -hmm. closing with and closing and killing the enemy and uh, fighting through an objective type of thing, which okay. would a commando unit would have to do like the first special service force. 
Um, uh, Fairburn stuff was all about assassination as well, you know, taking out oh. sentries and stuff like that, which Guillotois himself had done, uh, killed Germans at knife point. Um, O'Neill uh, in 42 was brought in to teach the uh, first special service force, mm -hmm. which I don't know if your viewers know, it was half Canadian, half American commando unit, um, uh, 2,500 strong. Uh, Churchill said it was the most feared commando unit in World War II, uh, mainly because uh, you know Canadians and Americans work really well together, mm. especially when you have the equipment, which was American equipment, Canadian know-how. We're a little better trained than you Yankees, so uh, yes. I hate to tell you that we <laughs> ate seals for breakfast up here, so stuff like that. So anyway, uh, O'Neill was a consummate uh, fighter. He loved Irishman too, by the way. He loved to fight, um, but he you know you, you can imagine you being a martial artist all of a sudden you're brought into a unit and the general in charge frederick says okay you have to train 2500 men to jump into norway and kill germans so all of a sudden well where do you start uh so he started his route was boxing mm -hmm. because everybody had done boxing back then martial arts as you right pretty like when i did martial arts in the 60s nobody knew what they were right go back a few 20 years before that same thing so he, boxing was the core. Everybody mm -hmm. done some boxing. So he added on to boxing um, some basic uh, jujitsu, mm -hmm. um, a lot of knife fighting because you put a, a knife in the hand of a boxer, you got a pretty good knife fighter. Mm -hmm. So uh, his system was very aggressive. Uh, he had to close with the enemy, fight through the objective, kill, move on, kill, move on. So that's the type of training they did. Um, to this day, the first special service force is still the keynote unit for hand-to-hand -hand combat. Uh, the British commandos are famous. Um, other units, SOE, but the first special service force is the benchmark for what we're talking about.